Hello friends, Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. This week's furniture rescue is going to be these three tables that I picked up from the curb during our recent bulky item trash pickup days. This French provincial coffee table was found all the way on the completely opposite end of town from these side tables, but they're all the same style, so I think they're gonna make a great set. The top of the coffee table is actually solid wood. I think it might even be walnut under this crusty old finish. So I'm going to try and strip that back and refinish it. But the tops on the end tables are a laminate or formica type material. So the only real way for me to deal with that and create a cohesive design is going to be with some paint. Here's a better look at what we're working with. Like I said, this is a French provincial style coffee table from the 60s. It's got a solid wood top on it, but as you can see, the finish is absolutely destroyed. And I won't know what condition the wood underneath here is in until I get through that. But I'm hoping that it's good enough to be able to restain. It's got all of the typical French provincial wavy lines and some gorgeous carvings on the legs. The end tables though, I think are a little bit younger, probably from the 70s. These tops are laminate over MDF on top of wood bases with a little less detail. I'm gonna get started by vacuuming up the cobwebs and then scrubbing these down with a TSP alternative to remove any junk that might be on these surfaces. I always start with a good degreasing clean before I sand anything because the debris, oils, and waxes that are pretty common on furniture surfaces can easily be ground down into the surface you're sanding and just wreak havoc on whatever new finish you're trying to apply. Also, I found these in the garbage, so that's reason enough for me to clean. Once everything was dry again, I was ready to start sanding. This finish is breaking up all by itself, so it shouldn't take too much effort to get through the rest with some 120 grit sandpaper. I wanted to be really mindful of these curvy detailed edges and not flatten anything down with my sander. So I decided to use a surf prep foam interface pad to conform around the profile. These come in a few thicknesses and firmnesses as well as grits. And I think one of their squishier half inch pads would have done better on this job, but I didn't have any on hand. So I just made do the best I could with this quarter inch firm pad instead. It still wasn't getting into the deeper details here, so I did spend about an hour and a half just sitting out in the quiet garage, sanding away by hand. This top cleaned up so nicely. It's definitely walnut. There are a couple of small nicks on the top, but a little bit of walnut colored wood filler will camouflage those just fine. As much as I wanted to be, I wasn't done sanding yet. I still had to scuff up the apron and legs on this coffee table and do both end tables too. It took me a few minutes to get all of the glue residue from the duct tape that was on these feet off. And I realized that one of the metal caps was missing. So I grabbed my flathead screwdriver and just pried off the other three as well. I'll put some fresh felt pads on these once I'm done. These super slick laminate tops got a really thorough sand with some 120 grit to dull down that shine and just create a fine texture on the surface for my paint to be able to grab onto. Then I used the same pads to smooth out all of the chippy edges and those legs. Once I was finally done with the sander, I wiped everything down with a damp microfiber cloth just to pick up any dust and then I masked off the underside of the coffee table and the top so that I didn't mess up that wood with my paint.
Just as one last measure to make sure that I get the best bond, I decided to spray everything down with some clear shellac. Most people think of shellac as a sealer to use at the end of a project, but it's also a really fantastic adhesion primer and it has the extra benefit of creating a nice clear seal on this wood so that if someone needs or wants to remove my paint job down the line, they should have a bit easier job of it. I'm gonna be using this one hour enamel from Wise Owl for the first time. I've seen and heard so many rave reviews from my peers in the furniture painting community that I could not resist picking up a few quarts when I found out I had a retailer near me in Moncton. But since this is my first time using this product, I wanted to read through the instructions really carefully. It says it's an incredibly tough, fast drying acrylic enamel for interior or exterior uses for surfaces that require a quick return to surface with an abrasion resistant finish. The surface to be painted must be clean and free of dirt, oils, mildew, wax, and grease, loose or flaking paint, done done and done glossy surfaces must be dulled by lightly sanding remove sanding dust before paint application also done dries in 30 minutes recoat in as little as one hour stir thoroughly because of its speed of drying this product is best applied with a sprayer that's perfect for me but if spraying is not practical larger surfaces can be finished by rolling with a short nap roller or a synthetic brush clean up with soapy water Sounds good, right? I chose the color Dark Forest for this, but when I popped the can open, I wasn't really sure about this color for this project. It looks like a really dark olive green, but I was picturing an almost black color when I looked at it on the swatch card. I decided to follow through despite my initial reaction to the color. I mixed the paint really well, and then I strained some into my Gravity Fed HVLP pneumatic sprayer. The can didn't say anything about thinning, but most other enamels I've worked with don't really like to be watered down, so I decided to spray it as is. If you've thinned this before, can you please let me know your thoughts? I'm super interested. I tested out all of my settings on some cardboard to make sure I had a good flow and then started spraying away. And this is me questioning all of my life's choices. This color was definitely giving military and not sophisticated French provincial. I even popped the garage door open for a minute so I could see it in the daylight. The paint looked amazing and it's not a bad color. It's just not what I wanted for these. I decided to take a break. I went and had a shower and thought on it a little bit longer, but Ultimately, I decided to clean out my gun and try another color that I'd grabbed, which is wrought iron, a deep dark gray. So I started over. I strained some of this new color into my gun. Again, it wasn't looking the same as the swatch card. It was a lot lighter than I wanted it to be, but by now I was unsure of all my choices and I just had to go with it. Sometimes you just have to go with it and trust that it's all gonna turn out somehow. I got a coat of the gray over top of the green, which is kind of hard to see on video, but trust me, they are two very different colors. And then once the gray was dry, I gave it a little scratch test. This stuff is incredible. A nice, smooth satin sheen and absolutely dried fast to a super hard finish. I flipped everybody over and quickly rubbed down the paint with a super fine sanding pad just to smooth out any little nubbies or raised grain that was in the paint and then I sprayed on another two coats. With all the painting done, I took off the masking and finished getting this walnut ready for its new finish. I still had to smooth out my filler and also go over the whole surface again with some 180 grit to smooth down the grain a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
since the paint color on these still wasn't what I'd originally envisioned, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do with this top. I was originally planning on doing a classic walnut stain on here, but I didn't think it was gonna look right with this cool gray. Now, I was wanting it to stay this kind of washed out, dusty walnut color, but if I put a sealer on it at this point, it was gonna turn super red. So I ended up reaching for this General Finishes Ash Gray Gel Stain, which again, I had never used before, so it seemed fitting. As soon as I did the first few swipes of this, I knew I had messed up. I had messed up big time. I could feel the wood suck the stain right in. Instead of sitting more on the top like I was thinking it would, I grabbed a rag and wiped it back, and sure enough, it was a super solid gray way more pigmented than I had wanted. If I'd used a pre-stain conditioner, the wood wouldn't have soaked it up like this. I could have, or probably should have, stopped here and just re-sanded the top, but in a moment of panic, I guess, I thought I should just keep going so that whatever disaster I'd just created would at least be an even disaster. <laughs> so after I got the whole top covered in stain and wiped back the excess, I immediately went and grabbed some mineral spirits and started washing off as much of the stain as I could. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get it all off like this, but at the very least it would tone it down and then I could reassess. I ended up doing three wash downs with the mineral spirits, one right after the other, until I wasn't getting very much more gray coming up on my rags. It was better, but I was so angry with it at this point, I couldn't tell if I liked it or not. So again, I just had to walk away to one, let it dry and two, let it go. <laughs> the next morning when the stain and all the mineral spirits were dry, I came back to the table and was shocked at how good it looked. I don't know how or why this worked out, but it did. Now it needed some sealer on it. And since I've used an oil-based stain, I need to use an oil-based sealer on top. This wipe on poly is super easy to apply and gives a nice soft sheen over wood finishes, which I thought would complement the satin paint really well. I wiped on a total of five coats of this since this is a surface that's gonna get a lot of traffic and this stuff is diluted and a lot thinner than a regular polyurethane to make it wipe onable. And I just used an old black sock over my glove to wipe this on. I still wasn't loving this gray. It's just flat and that's saying a lot because I really like a boring, flat, simple finish. So I dug through my wax collection, which doesn't see the light of day very often because I usually don't do decorative wax accents, but I thought it might help bring a little bit of life back to these. I used a stiff bristled wax brush to push some of this black wax down into the details and then rubbed it back with a clean rag to pull off the excess. Since this paint isn't porous, it's pretty easy to move the wax around and get it back off if you don't love it, but it will cure up and seal itself to the surface with a little bit of time. Let's have one more look at the tables that I saved from hitting the garbage truck and what they look like now. I'm still not sure how I feel about this finished product. I mean, they're beautiful pieces of furniture and someone will definitely get years more use out of them. I just don't know if they're my style. I'd love to know your thoughts, so please leave me a comment before you go. I'm gonna head back out to the garage and decide which trash find is up next and I will catch you all next time.